Hey everyone, Stefan here. So this video is going to be a time lapse of sculpting the human body as I would do it uh, when sculpting from scratch, which is very good practice for anybody. And uh, I am going to put up uh, the non time lapse version of this video on Gumroad if you want to uh, watch it slowly and follow along. Um, it'll be free, don't worry, and I hope it'll be useful. And now this video isn't going to include sculpting the head. I've done that previously. There's a full length video on that. Uh, this isn't the same head, it's one of the practice heads I've done at some point. It's again a speed sculpt, so don't look at it too hard. And you saw in the beginning, well, the first thing I did was align it eight times upwards, so I get, you know, the eight heads tall proportions. And afterwards, I actually moved the head a little bit down, so this is closer to seven and a half heads, so not quite the idealized eight heads tall, but uh, instead the more realistic seven and a half heads, or you know, somewhere between the two. It's not an exact science. Anyway, there's uh, obviously several ways you could approach this. In my opinion, the best is to define all the muscle groups using these relatively rough base meshes, which uh, just help by having the overall structure correctly uh, before we start adding any detail. Especially here in the arms, having this like chain link kind of construction where the upper arm and the forearm meet up at the elbow joint. This is infinitely easier than sculpting the entire thing from like a tube shape or whatever. And the same thing goes for the legs as well. And it's also very helpful to uh, define a proper posture that we could work with once we start adding any amount of detail because it's obviously very easy and straightforward to, uh, you know, just move these separated meshes and place them wherever we want it to be, rather than try and deform one continuous mesh. And now for feet, and actually for hands as well, most of the time I like starting from a box, but obviously you could start with any kind of shape you like. If you're new at this, obviously sculpting the hands and feet may take a little bit more time before they start looking right. But in general, my recommendation is when you're sculpting something which is more difficult to you, uh, jump around the model, iterate on the difficult parts. Uh, what I mean by that is work on someplace else on the model and then come back to the difficult parts. And each time you're going to be seeing, you're going to be noticing new things you didn't notice before. And obviously it's a good idea to, you know, look at nice reference as well. So there just now I started the hands using a box as well and now doing the same thing for each finger, which I think is a very good way to approach fingers. I mean, using boxes instead of cylinders, having the different sides of the fingers properly defined before we start refining them is a very good idea. It's very helpful. And this may go without saying, but I think it's also a very good approach. Uh, if I were doing like a gesture, uh, even if I were doing like a clenched fist. Oftentimes, again, I'd prefer starting out like this, so I know the structure of the hand is there and it, it, it's correct and all the fingers are facing where they should be. And now once we have this kind of base mannequin, we can start remeshing these objects and adding some detail and then also joining these objects together one by one so that we can start sculpting across the volumes. And of course, also adding all the features that aren't in the base mesh, uh, like the trapezius muscle right here. Now, I'm not going to talk about each of these muscles because this video is way too fast for that, but I am going to put up some images here of uh, the Ecrochet model, which I made, which uh, is amazing. And you can buy it on Superhive and Gumroad, yada, yada. And hopefully that'll give you a better understanding of the kind of detail we're adding right now. And again, this is like an average dude. It's not like a heroic type of body. Uh, so the muscles aren't going to be that big and the posture isn't going to be that heroic as well. And by the way, I think this is something of a common pitfall where as beginners we get really focused on the muscles and we make these super muscular bodies, but they just don't feel as natural as they should. And if we were to try and make like a normal body, it just doesn't work as well. Cause again, we try to focus on the muscles and not so much the underlying structure of the base shapes of the human body. And so then if uh, we're ever in a situation where we don't have those inflated muscles, we end up with something which clearly has a lot of mistakes. So again, that's why I think sculpting a more regular body uh, is good practice because it makes us focus more on the more important stuff. 
And to be clear, I'm not saying uh, that this model in particular is uh, some kind of perfectly correct impeccable example of anatomy, because this is still a speed sculpt, it took like an hour and a half in real time. If this were meant for more professional applications, I would put more time into it. And this recording is actually a couple months old, you can see the old brush manager because I'm still not on Blender 4.3 for this one. By the way, do let me know please if uh, you'd like to see more character sculpting stuff. Anyway, I should point out if uh, I were making this character for production to be rigged, I would raise the arms up uh, slightly at least. I wouldn't raise them all the way to the sides, by the way, or make them perfectly straight. Uh, that's an older way of doing things. Nowadays, it's very rare that I've had to do that for production. So yeah, just a tip, if you're sculpting a human body to retopologize later and make a base mesh for doing character work, I would recommend doing like an A pose and not a T pose. But on this one, the arms are slightly further down because that's just a more natural posture. A relatively stiff posture still, but that's alright. And for now, I'm gonna shut up for a bit and leave you with the rest of the sculpting time lapse, which I hope is going to be useful. Please let me know if it is, or if it isn't.
Okay, so at the very end, I decided to, for the fun of it, just uh, make this guy's muscles more pronounced. So right now we'll be going away from the regular guy aesthetic and more into the uh, severely dehydrated, zero fat, very muscular dude game character kind of aesthetic. So that just means going across the entire model, making all the dips more prominent, and just adding some bulk and definition to all of these muscles, including some definition of the smaller muscles, which usually wouldn't be so defined unless, uh, you know, the character is performing some kind of movement, which really involves those muscles. So overall, not as realistic, but uh, kind of fun, if I'm honest. It's uh, definitely good practice to experiment with different body types, and actually, come to think of it, I don't have a lot of experience with, like, overweight, bulkier types of characters, so at some point I should probably put some practice into that. But for now, this is pretty much it for this one. I really hope it was useful, and I will see you in the next one.